Nikon's relentless innovation continues to stir excitement and rumours about their next mirrorless flagship, the Nikon Z92, are already making waves. Positioned as the successor to the game-changing Z9 that revolutionised the photography world in 2021, the Z92 is rumoured to elevate both stills and video performance even further. However, a key question lingers. Does it truly need a global shutter? In this video, we'll explore the latest rumours and potential upgrades and delve into whether global shutter technology is essential for Nikon's next top-tier camera. Let's get into it. While details about the Nikon Z92's design are still scarce, it's expected to carry over many features from the Z9. The durable, weather-sealed body and deep ergonomic grip that professionals loved in the Z9 are likely to return. In contrast to Sony's smaller A93, which offers a compact body with an optional vertical grip, the Z92 may continue with its integrated larger grip design, favouring durability and familiarity for DSLR users, making the jump to mirrorless. We may also see refinements in the dual-axis tilting screen and button layout, enhancing overall usability. One of the most intriguing rumours is the potential inclusion of a global shutter sensor. A global shutter would completely eliminate rolling shutter distortion, a game-changer for high-speed action and sports photography. With a rumoured readout speed of 0.4 milliseconds, the Z92 could offer flash sync capabilities as fast as 1 by 2,000th of a second across all shutter speeds, along with blazing continuous shooting speeds that might exceed Sony's 120 FPS. Additionally, it's said to feature a 20.4 megapixel sensor powered by Nikon's new Xpeed 8 processor, along with a high-resolution mode for even greater versatility. Though information is still limited, it's expected that the Z92 will build on the impressive video capabilities of its predecessor, the Z9. This could mean internal 10-bit ProRes 422HQ and 12-bit ProRes RAW HQ recording right out of the box, possibly even surpassing the Z9's firmware-enabled 8K 60p RAW video recording. Nikon might also introduce advanced heat management systems to support longer, high-quality video recording sessions. Improved low-light performance and an expanded ISO range could also be on the table, along with advancements in the Z92's autofocus system, potentially matching or exceeding Sony's A93 and AI-powered subject detection. Nikon may even add new subject tracking modes, including specialised options for birds or insects, to compete directly with Sony's popular tracking features. The release date for the Nikon Z92 remains speculative, but it's expected to be announced between 2025 and 2026. As for pricing, Nikon could follow a similar strategy to the Z9, which surprised the market with a competitive price of $5,499, undercutting its DSLR predecessor, the Nikon D6. The Z92 may stick with this aggressive pricing approach to stay competitive with rivals like Sony and Canon, aiming to capture more of the professional market. With Nikon reportedly developing the Z9H, a model rumoured to feature a global shutter, the debate remains whether the Z92 also require this technology. While Sony's A93 has raised the bar with distortion-free images and unmatched flash sync speeds, Nikon's stacked sensor technology in the Z9 has already minimised rolling shutter issues significantly. The Z92 could instead focus on other key upgrades, such as higher resolution or enhanced video performance, to distinguish itself from both the Z9H and Sony's latest offerings. Ultimately, the inclusion of a global shutter in the Z92 may depend on Nikon's broader strategy to cater to different segments of professional photographers. As the Nikon Z92 remains shrouded in speculation, there's no denying that it is positioned to push the boundaries of what professionals can expect from a mirrorless camera. The Z9 made waves with its groundbreaking features in 20, 21, and the Z92 is likely to continue that legacy by targeting both photographers and videographers with a range of advanced capabilities. 
From its potential global shutter technology to enhancements in video recording, autofocus and overall performance, this camera could set new benchmarks for the industry. However, whether it needs a global shutter remains a contentious issue. Global shutter technology offers undeniable benefits, such as eliminating rolling shutter distortion entirely and unlocking unmatched flash sync speeds, making it particularly advantageous for high-speed and action photography. But it's worth considering that Nikon's stack sensor technology, as seen in the Z9, has already significantly reduced the impact of a rolling shutter. While a global shutter would be an exciting addition, it may not be a necessity for all users, especially considering the other potential improvements the Z9 II could offer. Nikon may decide to focus on other critical areas like higher resolution, improved video capabilities and even better low-light performance, ensuring that the Z9 II stands apart from its competitors. Beyond the question of the global shutter, the Z92's rumoured improvements in usability will likely appeal to both seasoned professionals and those transitioning from DSLRs. The continuation of the robust weather-sealed body and the possible enhancements in the button layout and tilting screen are evidence that Nikon is paying close attention to the ergonomics and durability that matter most to working photographers. Moreover, the introduction of new subject detection modes and refinements in 3D tracking autofocus could help Nikon solidify its place as a leader in AI-powered autofocus systems, a critical feature for photographers who need reliable performance in unpredictable shooting conditions. Another significant area where the Z9 II is expected to shine is in video performance. With potential internal recording options like 10-bit ProRes, 422HQ and 12-bit ProRes RAW HQ right out of the box, it could cater to filmmakers looking for a mirrorless camera that offers exceptional video quality without the need for external recorders. And if Nikon integrates advanced heat management systems, allowing for extended recording sessions without overheating, it would make the Z9 II a strong contender for videographers who require long-duration, high-quality recording in challenging environments. Additionally, improvements in low-light video performance could make the Z9 II a go-to camera for shooting in difficult lighting conditions, further expanding its appeal. Pricing will be another crucial factor in the reception of the Z9 II. The Z9 made headlines not just for its features, but also for its surprisingly competitive price, offering more advanced technology than the Nikon D6 at a lower cost. Nikon's decision to undercut its competitors in the professional market worked in its favour, and the Z9 II could continue this trend. By maintaining an aggressive pricing strategy, Nikon can ensure that the Z9 II remains accessible to a broad range of professionals while still delivering cutting-edge technology. If the Z9 II follows the Z9's lead and lands in a similar price range, it could become a must-have tool for photographers and videographers alike, further intensifying the competition in the mirrorless market. The release timeline also plays a role in the anticipation surrounding the Z9 II, with rumours suggesting a launch window between 20, 25 and 20, 26, Nikon has ample time to refine the features and technology to meet or exceed market expectations. The potential overlap with the rumoured Z9H, which may feature a global shutter, adds an interesting layer to Nikon's strategy. It's possible that Nikon is positioning the Z9 II and Z9H to cater to different segments of the professional photography world offering a choice between models that prioritise different performance metrics, such as the global shutter for high-speed shooters or enhanced resolution and video capabilities for filmmakers and hybrid shooters. Ultimately, the Nikon Z9 II is shaping up to be a pivotal release for the company, one that could solidify its place at the top of the mirrorless camera market. The combination of performance upgrades, potential global shutter technology and a focus on both stills and video could make it the go-to camera for professionals who demand versatility without compromise. As Nikon continues to innovate and refine its offerings, the Z9 II will not only be compared to its predecessor but also to flagship models from competitors like Sony and Canon. How well it stands out will depend on how Nikon balances its priorities whether it opts for global shutter technology, focuses on video performance, or explores new ways to improve the user experience. Regardless of the final feature set, one thing is clear. Nikon's commitment to pushing the limits of camera technology shows no signs of slowing down. 
the Z92 is poised to be a powerful addition to their lineup, meeting the evolving needs of professionals across a wide range of photography and videography fields. It could very well be the camera that defines the next generation of mirrorless innovation, continuing Nikon's tradition of delivering cameras that are not just tools, but transformative devices in the hands of creative professionals. As we await more concrete details, it's exciting to consider the possibilities the Nikon Z92 brings. Whether you're a professional photographer, a filmmaker, or someone in between, the Z92 promises to offer features that meet the demands of today's dynamic creative landscape. Stay tuned for more updates as we learn more about what could be Nikon's most advanced mirrorless camera yet. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you're most excited about regarding the Nikon Z92 in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe for more in-depth reviews and updates on the latest camera releases. So that's all about the upcoming Nikon Z92. Do let us know what you think about this. As for everything else, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want more content like this on your feed.